I pray that this morning by grace, the Lord will grant me grace to share with you gems from the scriptures that will not only strengthen your marriages, but will also prepare those who are getting ready to get married. Amen. Kindly turn with me in your Bibles to Psalm 112, Psalm 112. As I ask a question in the message this morning, what legacy will you leave? Ways to leave a godly legacy. The day our dear sister Gifty and Nana and Sakwa got married, I shared some of these words, but God's word is always fresh. Amen. Amen. Psalm 112, I begin reading from verse 1. The psalmist begins and says, Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who delights greatly in his commandments, his descendants will be mighty on the earth. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches will be in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we honor you this morning for the truth of your word. I pray that this morning your word will come alive, afresh to us, that marriages that are struggling will be strengthened today, that those who have made up their mind because of what they have seen at home and around them have vowed that they will not marry, that Father, this morning you will change their hearts, and that at the end of it all, Every marriage will be lifted back on the rock to stay. Speak to us this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. And the people of God shall say, glory to God. As we celebrate the institution of marriage this week and especially this morning around the Christian church in the world, the question I would want to ask each one of us is that how do you want your marriage to become? What is the essence of marriage? I, I want you to understand this morning that marriage is not an afterthought of God. Marriage is divine, for it is God himself who said that it is not good for the man to be alone. And anything that God says is good, is good. Marriage is good. Hallelujah. And in the beginning, God created a man and a woman. Not Adam and Stephen, nor A.C. and Akosia. In the beginning, God said it is not good that the man should be alone and created Eve for the man. This is the essence of marriage. This is the essence of God's will. And this is how it should be in the name of Jesus. So I want to ask us a very simple question this morning. What legacy will you leave? How do you want to be remembered? As a married man, as a married woman, one day how will your story be told? How will your children tell your story? If they go to school and talk with their friends, what would they say to them about dad? What will your children say to their peers about mommy? Yesterday, my wife had a call from London. One of her sons, very gifted young man, going through marital problems, which has been ongoing. And as a young man spoke to my wife, he said something that touched my wife. The young man said, my, 
the, the little girl of this young man said to the Amanda, they met them at the Croydon shopping mall and said, and said to the, the minder, who is an elderly woman, so she calls her grandma and says, Grandma, my mom has been beating my dad. And this is a tall, stout man. The man has made a quality decision that he will never hit the wife. And as this four-year-old girl daily sees the mom throwing things at dad, hitting dad in her mind, dad is not strong enough to fight with mom. And then she told the dad, tomorrow as I go to school, I will tell my teacher that my mommy has been beating you. The question is, how will your children tell your story? How will you be remembered when you die? How will my grandchildren tell my story? How will your story be told? How will your wife tell your story if you are not there, as she talks to the friends that she can trust, how will your husband tell your story to those that he can trust if you are not around? Today, for many, Valentine has become a day of celebration, a day of exchanging letters, a day of exchanging cards, flowers, gifts, and all manner of things, which are all good. St. Valentine took a pagan worship and brought Christianity into the center of it. The, the issue is not about the day. The issue is about the heart with which we celebrate Valentine's Day. But the question is, how? How will your in-laws tell your story? As your in-laws talk about you, what will they say about you? What marriage example are you leaving your generation? Legacy is not necessarily the will that you leave behind. It is extremely important. But do you know, beloved, that, and especially for the many young people that the Lord has brought to Trinity Baptist Church, and many of you will be contemplating marriage, and I pray that each one of you will marry and you will not be like Paul. For Paul, it was a choice. Amen. Except the Lord asks you to do that, I want you to understand that marriage is good. Can I have a witness? I have been in it for 33 years and it, it gets better each day in the name of Jesus. But did you know that your decision as a married couple or as a young man that is contemplating marriage, a young woman, what you do in the marriage will not only affect your generation but will also affect the next generation. Abraham and Sarah they are example of allowing Abraham to sleep with Hagar, the aftermath of which is Ishmael. We are all living to see the consequences of that mistake that they made. I pray that you will understand that the God that you serve is the God who orders the steps of his people. Never rush into marriage. It is better to marry late than to run, to run into marriage and bring a caricature home. Today, there are too many out there who know how to talk and how to rap. But the truth is that as they are giving you all those kind of raps, their heart is somewhere else. May the Lord grant our daughters a discerning heart. May the Lord grant our daughters 
how to choose. Don't look at the four wheel. Don't look at the Ted Baker suit they are wearing. Don't look at the Russell Hobbs shoes that they are wearing and the Versace ties that they wear. Not even at the Armani glasses that they wear. But may the Lord grant you the grace to see the heart. Yeah. To see the heart. <sighs> Today we have inherited the blessings of Abraham and the problems of Abraham. Today Isaac has become a threat not only to the Western world, but a threat that we must pray that it does not raise its ugly head in our world. But this morning, the psalmist sings and he tells us that blessed is a man, blessed is a man, blessed is a woman who delights greatly in the Lord. Blessed is a man who fears the Lord who delights greatly in his command. Understand this morning that your marriage and family are headwaters to your legacy. Your legacy does not begin at your working place or in your ministry or the money that you leave in your accounts or your influence in the world, but your legacy begins at home. It is what your children are seeing. It is how you are living out your marriage. It is how your family are seeing you. That is the legacy that you are building. What occurs in your family and ministry will only be as deep as your personal walk with Jesus and how it has been lived out. Understand that any marriage that is built on the foundation that is Christ will stand. Whereas any marriage that is built on stand will naturally be blown away by the storms of our generation. God, in his wisdom, began creation with family and the world will end with family. A day is coming, Revelation 19, 9 tells us that the bride of Christ, which is the church, will sit at table and have supper with the Lord. That is at the consummation of time, and we look forward to that day when each one of us will be clothed afresh in the heavenly body, and we will sit at table with the Lord. And I pray that on that day, you, your spouse, and your children will be there in the mighty name of Jesus. So, beloved, God established the home as a unit of society. And the fellowship of marriage life and the home which it builds is God's supreme gift to man and the safeguarding of civilization. This morning, let me just give you a few suggestions as to what you and I can do, trace that will help you to live a godly legacy. Number one, hold on to your marriage covenant. In other words, to live a godly legacy, a trait of all marriages that are strong and are evident that they are living a godly legacy are those that hold on to the marriage covenant. In other words, to the marital vows. Your marriage covenant is more than a promise to stay married. And understand that marriage is not a contract. Contracts can be broken. In contrast, there are, there, there are clauses where one can walk out if the person is not satisfied. But marriage is a covenant. And the Lord himself is the seal and the witness of that covenant. So for you to live a, 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 a godly legacy, make a quality decision to hold on to your marriage covenant. 
And to do that, as a child of God, never threaten your husband or wife with the D word. When I talk about the D word, I'm talking about divorce. Don't tell your wife, I brought you from the village. Don't tell your wife, you must be lucky to have been married unto me. And you, the wife, don't threaten your husband, I will pack my things and leave. When you do that, you are threatening your spouse. Instead of using the D word in the marriage, replace it with the C word. So in other words, replace the threat of divorce with covenant. Tell your husband, we are in this covenant till death do us part. And husband, tell your wife, I am committed to this relationship. Replace divorce with covenant, with commitment, and with compassion. First John 4, 18, the Bible says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. The moment you threaten your spouse with divorce, all that you are doing is that you are injecting fear into the heart of your partner. Instead, let your partner know you are committed. Understand that the con uh, understand the content of the verse. Let your spouse know that not only will I love and cherish you till, till the end of this world, but for the seven billion people in our world, there is no one who compares with you in the name of Jesus. So love your wife as Christ loved the church. Amen. Jesus loved the church sacrificially, selflessly, and unconditionally. Not because the, the, the woman will bear children for... for uh, don't marry your wife because she has to bear children. You are not marrying your wife because she has to be a good cook. You are not marrying your wife because she will wash and iron your clothes. And men, I, I don't think in these modern days, our wives should be ironing our clothes. Oh, I don't believe that at all. I believe that most of the home duties, if we don't have house helps, we must be helping our wives out. Hallelujah. Yeah. Uh, understand that you and I are commanded to put the spouses of our needs ahead of us. Understand that authority you are the head of the house, and that authority that God has given to you comes with accountability. And the accountability of that is that you don't just come from work, throw your shirt and your shoes somewhere, and, and <laughs> tell your neighbor it as well. Therefore, make a list of each other's needs and meet it. It is said that for, secondly, to live a godly legacy, Make a list of each other's needs and work hard. You see, marriage is not about what you will get. Marriage is about what you give. So if in a marriage, one of the biggest traits of a healthy marriage is where husband is outgiving the love, uh, outgiving the woman, and the woman is also determined to outgive the man. You are coming from work, you bought a gift. Unknown to you for your husband. Unknown to you, your wife has also bought a gift for you. Wow. Marriage is about what we give. Marriage is not about what we take. And one of the signs of a healthy marriage is where you see that basic principle at work. So you look out for the needs of your man as a, 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 as, as a wife or as a young man preparing for marriage. Understand that for men, their number one need is spelled X-E-X. -E and that one, as a woman, you must be careful not to be saying, I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm tired. Amen. And, and you must know that, that not only should your words speak, but the way you dress in the evening should also have a message. Amen. Glory to God. And, and, and to do that, <laughs> but the second is respect. Uh, I've seen the time fly, and I have to be careful. Then the third is admiration. You see, 
every man, regardless of his qualification or where he is, wants a woman that will admire him. And I've written and explained all this very well in my book, How to Treat Your Husband as a King. Every man wants to be admired, regardless of his qualification. The English, whether he has a PhD in English or not, once he's married to you, you must know that he, your husband stands tall above all other men. Then the, number four is the attractiveness of your wife. Sisters understand that every man wants an attractive woman. Attractiveness does not necessarily mean that you must be a 21-year-old girl. No. It's the way you keep yourself. You know, if you're a housewife, understand that by the time your husband comes home, you are well. Don't just put your clothes here and then you understand your hair is all over your body. You know, the way you... The, ah. You present yourself so well that the moment the man sees you, he starts scratching his head. He knows today is a good day. Then, the fifth is domestic security. Don't let your husband become angry. A hungry man is an angry man. So make sure cook his best dishes for him. But for the wife, men, understand that the number one need of every woman is affection. And women are wired for a cockro. The words you will use on your wife. Oh, you know, I'm telling you that 90%, 99% of all women, most of them are not necessarily after money. Of course, there are 1% who marry because of money, but most women marry because they are in love. And when a woman is in love, she, you know, stop falling. But women fall in love so much so that they fall with their head, they fall with their nose, they fall with their ears, they fall with their hands, they fall, they fall, bam, flat. <laughs> so you, the man, you show affection to that woman who has fallen for you. The way you brush the hair. The way your hand goes around the ears. The way your hand, you know, you, oh. Because the Bible says whoever finds a wife finds a good thing. And, and you, are, you are thanking God for the precious thing that you have found. And if something is precious to you, you honor it. You don't talk to her anyhow. And speak words that are soothing, that are healing, that are encouraging. Look at the neck of your wife and let her know ah, that the shape of your neck is like the rock of Gibraltar. The beauty of your mouth far a cease the beauty of the roses of Sharon. Let <laughs> let your wife know that her shape that for you when God created you he paused and took time and has shaped you more beautiful. Uh, number two, communication. <laughs> Understand that you must find time to talk to your wife. Then number three, honesty and openness. And number four, financial security. And number five, Family commitment. Every man, every woman wants a man that is committed to the family. It is important for you to help your nieces and your extended family, but understand that your children are number one. Are you hearing me? Your wife and your children are number one. 
I was educated by my sister. I have so many nieces and nephews. They are very dear to me. But regardless, my children are my number one responsibility. Are you hearing? And, and, and don't have children with, with, with a woman and, and tell her, her family did not sleep with her. You did. So it is your responsibility. <laughs> Glory to God. Let me go on. Number three, to leave a godly legacy, pray with your wife and study God's word together. Have a focused conviction that the word of the Lord is eternal and that it endures forever. Have a conviction that God's word is relevant for every generation. It is powerful in every generation. And that as long as the marriage is built on the foundation which is Christ, regardless of the storms that will come and go, that marriage will stand in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In prayer, as you hold your hands, as you wake up, and as you are praying in the house, understand that one will chase a thousand. And when the two of you come together in prayer, there is no demon, there is no ancestral curse, there is no mechanization of man that will be so strong enough to affect your children. Find time. If you want to build a godly legacy, let your children know that mom and dad are parents who love to pray and to study the word of the living God. Let them know that God still honors his word. Understand that our generation has given rise to relativism. And today, what, the, the question is, what is in there for me? Everything to man today must be relative. And as such, it has er eliminated the God of Scripture and provides a philosophical exchange for life on its own merit. Relativism provides its own philosophy. And what it teaches is that today in our generation, the sanctity of life, that life begins in the fetus, that the sanctity of marriage, that marriage is between a man and a woman, that the sanctity of family, that family comprises a man, a woman, the children, and of course the extended family, that the sanctity of worship today, Relativism teaches. And uh, as a philosophy, it makes it so loud that this, the sanctity of life, of marriage, the sanctity of family and worship, no longer serve as moral benchmarks against which governments measure whether laws are right or wrong. Today, form your own opinion. So if you want to be married to an animal, you can marry an animal. If a man wants to marry a man, he can, it's, your, it's your right. The sanctity of marriage is under threat. The God of the Bible has been overthrown. The, the creator, but a day is coming when all eyes shall see him as he is. And we look forward to that day in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. But be a man of integrity to live a godly legacy. Three things any man, any woman can live for the children is passing the button on to your children the fear of God. And I pray that for each of us, may the words in the book of Judges never come upon us, which says that, and there arose another generation which did not know the Lord, nor the works of the Lord. Why? Because the generation ahead of them failed to pass the button on. And I pray that in your generation and in my generation, may we pass the button of integrity and the fear of God to the next generation. When I have integrity, my words and my deeds match up. When I have integrity, what I say at home and what I do at church is the same. If I have integrity wherever I am and work, I will work with the utmost integrity. I will not be a cheater. Hallelujah. 
Challenges and temptations are so real. But the man of integrity will rise above all that in the mighty name of Jesus. But keep romance alive. In any family that is strong, a trait of a family that leaves a godly legacy is that they keep romance alive. Solomon chapter 4 verses 1 to 7. Put it on the screen for me, the NIV. Ten minutes is a lot. How beautiful you are, my heart. These are the words. These are the real raps, my darling. Oh, how beautiful. Your eyes behind your veil are doves. Your hair is like a flock of goats descending from Mount Gilead. Let's go. Your teeth are like a flock of sheep just shown coming up from the washing. Each has its twin. Not one of them is alone. Wow. Your lips are like a scarlet ribbon. Your mouth is lovely. Your temples behind your veil are like the house of pomegranate. Hey, Solomon, no whistle. No wonder this guy. I've been wondering how this man can have 300 wives and 700 concubines. Look at his wraps. Your neck is like the Tower of David, built with elegance. On it hung a thousand shields, all of them shields of warriors. <laughs> Your two breasts are like fawns, like twin fawns of a gazelle that browse among the lilies. Until the day breaks and the shadows flee, I will go to the mountain of May and to the hill of incense. That one is deep. All beautiful you are, my darling. There is no flaw in you. If you speak like this to a woman, what is it that that woman will not do for you? Ah. Help your wife to change the hairstyles. And understand that, understand that it is only a woman who can leave the house with short hair and come back with long hair. Because within those two hours, she flew to Brazil and back. But whether it is Brazilian hair or Malaysian hair or Indian hair, let your wife look good for you in the mighty name of Jesus. The right means of solving conflict. Take the initiative to resolve conflicts. Don't major on minor issues. And the problem with many of us as couples is that we major on the minor issues and leave the weightier matters. Mama.